بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the second part of the uh, expansion So we're, we're taking here the language review exercise A Write a response to each question So we have some questions here We'll be writing a response to each question Include the word in the parenthesis and either two or enough if you remember, two or enough. So we have here, uh, for example, why are you getting rid of this rug? And the uh, word here is worn. You say it's too worn. It's too worn. So we'll be using two or enough. We have one. Why can't we make a cake before the guests arrive? And the word time. Two, why are you turning on more lights, dark? Why don't you like driving with him dangerously? Why don't you like this landscape and the word trees? And here we have the continuing five, six, seven, eight, and nine. But before we answer these questions, let's get back to the grammar here with two and enough. Just revise it for a moment here. Again, two can be placed before adjectives and adverbs. Remember, two comes before adjectives and adverbs, not after, before adjectives and also Adverbs, for example, here she can't reach the shelf. She's too short, too short. Also here, you're talking too loudly. This is an adverb here. You're talking too loudly. I can't hear the news. So, uh, of course, we know too means more than necessary, more than necessary. Enough can be placed after adjectives and adverbs. So enough comes after the adjectives and adverbs, unlike to, which comes before. For example, she can reach the shelf. She is tall enough. She is tall enough. Enough, it means the correct amount of something. You're talking loudly enough. Everyone can hear you. Enough can be placed before nouns also. Before nouns, when you say, I have enough money, I don't have enough money, we don't have enough time. So you can put enough before nouns, which means that you have or don't have the correct amount of this thing. A phrase with two or enough can be followed by an infinitive phrase. For example, you're too sick to leave the house or you're not well enough to go out to work. Or you can say, I have enough days off to go on a so now that we have revised two and enough, let's get back to our exercise here. So number one, why can't we make a cake before the guests arrive? And the word time. Why can't we make a cake before the guests arrive? So we have guests who will be arriving soon and you're uh, asking uh, your friend, why can't we make a cake before they arrive? And use the word time. Use the word time with either two or enough. So what's the answer here in this scenario here? I think the answer is easy. We don't have enough time. So enough comes before the noun time. We don't have enough time. They will be arriving soon. We don't have enough time to make a cake. Number two, why are you turning on more lights? So this is a question here. Why are you turning on? more lights and the answer here the word that will help in the answer is dark so the answer is to, of course use two or enough uh, with the word dark this is an easy one because it's too dark why are you turning on more lights because it's too dark number three why don't you like driving with him why don't you like driving with him and the adverb here is dangerously why don't you like driving with him? And the adverb here is dangerously. So which one do we choose here in this, uh, in this scenario? Is it two or enough? I think this is an easy one also because he drives too dangerously. I don't like uh, riding with him because he drives too dangerously, too recklessly, too carelessly, and so on. He drives too dangerously. Number four, why don't you like this landscape? Why don't you like this landscape and the word trees? So which one in this scenario here, which one do we use? Is it two or enough? Why don't you like this landscape? Yes, because it doesn't have enough 
trees. It doesn't have enough trees. I want more trees. So you say, it doesn't have enough trees, the landscape. Continuing here with number five, why isn't he running in the marathon this weekend? Why isn't he running in the marathon this weekend? And the word here is lazy because he is, isn't lazy enough or because he's too lazy. So, of course, because he is or he's too lazy. Number six, why don't you like small rooms? Why don't you like small rooms? And the word here is claustrophobic. Why don't you like small rooms? And the word here is claustrophobic. Claustrophobic is someone who is afraid of small places from the word cluster here. So claustrophobic is someone who has a fear of small places. So why don't you like small rooms? So the answer, yes, they make me feel too claustrophobic. They make me feel too claustrophobic. Number seven, why do you find him difficult to understand? Why do you find him difficult to understand? And the word here is quickly. Why do you find him difficult to understand? Use quickly with two uh, or enough. So, because he speaks too quickly, I can't understand him. I can't understand him. He speaks too quickly. Number eight, why aren't you going to the game tonight? Why aren't you going to the game tonight? And the word here is tired. Why aren't you going to the game tonight? And the word is tired. Do we use two or enough here? This is also an easy one because I'm too tired. You can't say I'm not tired enough. Of course, you will say I'm too tired. I can't go to the game. Number nine, why don't you like this couch? And the helping word here is comfortable. Why don't you like this couch? Because it's not or it isn't comfortable enough. Because it isn't comfortable enough. Of course, you can't say because it's too comfortable, then you like it. You say here, it's not or it isn't comfortable enough. Exercise B here, form sentences by combining items from box A and B. You can see here box A here and this is here is box B. Box A, fill out forms, litter, lose your keys, read about scientific discoveries, sit in a sauna, skydive, touch your ear with your tongue, witness a crime. This is box A. Box B, Boring, exciting, fascinating, frightening, impossible, irresponsible, irritating, and relaxing. So these are boxes A and B. Let's read the question again. Form sentences by combining items. So we'll be connecting, uh, connecting them or combining the items, box A and box B. Use a gerund as the subject of the each sentence. So we'll be uh, using the grammar, gerund as a subject of a sentence. You can use words from box B more than once. So box B you can use more than once. For example, losing your keys. This is of course the third sentence here, to lose your keys. You say losing, so gerund is to add an ing. Losing your keys is irritating. Using Losing your keys is irritating. Of course this is the gerund lesson here if you remember it from the grammar. Gerund as subject. A gerund or a gerund phrase, gerund phrase is two words of course, can be the subject of a sentence, can be the subject of a sentence, by adding of course ing, they act as a noun. For example here, swimming uses more muscles of the body than almost any other form of exercise. This is gerund as subject, this is a gerund phrase now, watching sports, so we have two words, two words here, this is a gerund phrase. Watching sports isn't nearly as fun as playing them. Make a gerund or gerund phrase negative by putting not before it, of course, not exercising or not warming up. And the final note here that a gerund subject takes a singular verb. Getting in shape takes. So we use a singular verb. So now that we have revised the gerund, let's get back to our exercise. So try to come up with sentences 
using uh, using words from uh, ex uh, box A and box B. So let's come up with some sentences. For example, here number one: filling out forms is boring. Filling out forms is boring. So turn box A into a gerund by adding ing, of course. Filling up forms is boring. So try to come up with a second sentence. Yes, very good. Number two here, littering is irresponsible. Littering, which means throwing litter or throwing trash in the street, is irresponsible. Number three, for example, I've written losing your keys is irritating, just as the example, of course. Losing your keys is irritating. Can you give me a fourth sentence? Can you give me a fourth sentence? Very good, but I've written here, reading about scientific discoveries is fascinating, which is true, of course. Reading about scientific discoveries is fascinating. Also here, also, number five, sitting in a sauna is relaxing. Sitting in a sauna, of course, it's very relaxing. Do you have another sentence? Can you give me a sixth sentence? So here, skydiving is exciting. Of course it is. Skydiving is exciting. Number seven, touching your ear with your tongue is impossible. Touching, so ing here, this is a gerund as subject. Touching your ear with your tongue is impossible. Of course it is. Witnessing a crime is frightening. Witnessing a crime is frightening, of course it is. So all of these are the sentences that I came up with uh, using a gerund as a subject. Jumping here to exercise C, write sentences using two or three adjectives to describe the following things. Write your sentences using two or three adjectives to describe the following things. Your school, your room, this book, your favorite piece of clothing, a place to visit, your favorite food, the last car you rode in. So again, write sentences using two or three adjectives. And remember that we have a specific order if I want to write more than one adjective. If I want to write two or three adjectives, I have a specific order uh, that I have to write the adjectives and describe the uh, the subject. If you remember this order, this is the adjective order here. When you use more than one adjective before a noun, the adjectives go in a certain order. The order is determined by category. So these are the categories here. The first one is opinion, like expensive or difficult. These are all opinions. The second one is size or shape of something. Size like large, small, shape like a round or maybe a square looking, age, young or ancient, color like red or turquoise, nationality, Saudi Arabian or British, material, glass or wooden. So this is the correct order if you want to write more than one adjective. You begin with opinion, then size or shape, then age, then color, then nationality, then the material like glass or wood or brick or anything else. For example, here, the beautiful old stone house. The beautiful, this is opinion, of course. Old, this is age. Stone, this is material. House, this is the noun that we are describing. So let's jump back, j jump back to the exercise. The first one is already done, of course. It has expensive new computer labs our school. It has expensive new computer labs. Number one, in your room, so describe something that is in your room using two or three adjectives. So for example, I have written, I have a beautiful small white room. I'm describing my room here. I have a beautiful small white room. So beautiful, this is an opinion, small, this is size, white, this is color, and then room. This book, so try to describe this book using more than one adjective. So let's see the answer here. This is a thick green book. 
What about number three, your favorite piece of clothing? Your favorite shirt or your favorite jacket, piece of clothing. So I've written here, I like wearing my old black shirt. My old black shirt. Number four, a place to visit. A place to visit. I've written London is a beautiful big city. A beautiful big city. Number five, your favorite food. So describe your favorite food using more than one adjective and remember the order. For example, I have written, I like hot white rice. Number six, the last car you rode in. The last car you rode in. For example, I have written, I rode a fast big white car. Fast is the opinion. Big, it's a size. White is a color and the word car. So you can describe any object that you have with more than uh, one uh, adjective, of course, and pay attention to the order. Exercise D here, use the words to write superlative uh, plus the present perfect questions, then ask and answer the questions with a partner. For example, here, interesting event read about. So you have to ask, then answer. So the question is here A, what is the most interesting event you've ever read about? The answer is the G20 2020 summit hosted in Riyadh in the, is the most interesting event I've ever read. So we have 10, 10 sentences that we have to write or 10 questions and answers that we have to write. Number one, beautiful place, visit. Number two, exciting city, visit. Number three, tall building, see. Number four, good book, read. Number five, spicy food, eat. Number six, hard to get, hard thing, do. Number seven, famous person, meet. Number eight, scary film, watch. Number nine, far place and travel. Finally, number 10, thoughtful present and receive. So we have to do just like what the example here. We have to uh, write a question using, of course, the superlative plus the present perfect questions. Then we answer also using the present perfect. Of course, this is the present perfect plus the superlative. For example, this is the most exciting sporting event I have been to in a long time. Or you can say as a question here, that's what we'll be writing. Who is the best footballer, uh, football player you've ever seen? So we begin with the superlative, the best, the most exciting. Then we write the present perfect you've ever seen. So number one, can you write the question for number one? So let's see the question for number one here. What is the most beautiful place you've ever visited? Of course, you can answer it as you like, but you have to use the present perfect. What's the most beautiful place you've ever visited? Answer using the present perfect. For example, I've written the most beautiful place I've ever visited is Switzerland. The most beautiful place I've ever visited is Switzerland. What about number two? Number two, can you write the question? Use the superlative and the present perfect as a question. Very good, number two. What's the most exciting city you've ever visited? The most exciting city you've ever visited? For me, the answer is the most exciting city I've ever visited is London. So the most exciting, this is the superlative city I've ever visited. This is the, uh, the present perfect. Number three, what's the question for number three? How do we write it? Yes, very good. What's the tallest building you've ever seen? What's the tallest building you've ever seen? I think that we all agree the tallest building I've ever seen is the Mecca clock tower, is the Mecca clock tower. Number four, can you write a question for number four? Let's see the correct question here. What's the best book you've ever read? What's the best book you've ever read? My answer was the best book I've ever read is the Holy Quran. So what's the best book you've ever read? The best book I've ever read is the Holy Quran. Number five, what's the spiciest food you've ever eaten? What's the spiciest food you've ever eaten? 
for me the answer was the spiciest food I've ever eaten is Indian food so continuing with the question here number six what's the hardest thing you've ever done what's the hardest thing you've ever done so I think they answer will vary from a person to person but I've written here the hardest thing I've ever done is graduating from university what about question number seven how do we write the question very good it's the same thing who is the most famous person you've ever met who is the most fa uh, famous person you've ever met maybe you met a celebrity an actor a football player so write the most famous person you've ever uh, met for example the most famous person I've ever met is uh, Javier Zanetti number eight what's the most what's the scariest film you've ever watched the scariest film you have ever watched for you of course for me the scariest film I've ever watched is paranormal activity number nine here what's the furthest place you've ever traveled to What's the furthest place you've ever traveled to? So you can write your own answer here. For me, the furthest place I've ever traveled to is Malaysia. And here, number 10, what's the most thoughtful present you've ever received? What's the most thoughtful, the superlative here, present you've ever received? This is the present uh, perfect, of course. The most thoughtful present I've ever received is a laptop. Very good. Exercise E here, rewrite each sentence as, as a they, the comparative, the, the, the comparative of course. For example here, he's been getting more exercises, he's been feeling better. So the answer is, the more exercises he gets, the better he feels. So this is the, the, the comparative. We have two sentences, each of them begins with the word the. The more exercises he gets, the better he feels. So number one, she's been studying anthropology. She's becoming fascinated with it. She's been studying anthropology. She be she's becoming fascinated with it. So very good. The more she studies anthropology, the more, fascinati the more fascinated she becomes with it. Excellent. Number two, we're getting closer to summer. I'm getting excited. So the same pattern here, use two sentences beginning with the word the. So the answer is very good. The closer we get to summer, the more excited I get. Number three, when a joke is really funny, people laugh really hard. So, very good. The funnier the joke, the harder people laugh. We use the and of course the comparative form. The funnier, the harder. Number four here, I keep sitting on this couch. I'm getting more and more tired. So, I think this is an easy one here. Yes, the longer I sit on this couch, the more tired I get. Very good. Number five, usually when a pair of shoes is cheap, they fall apart quickly. So, the cheaper, yes, the cheaper the shoes, the more quickly they fall apart. Very good. Number six, small rooms make me feel claustrophobic. So, yes, the smaller the room, the more claustrophobic I feel. Very good. Exercise if he write a story about the picture. You see the picture of the desert here. Use the grammar points of units two, three, and four, if you remember them. Multiple adjectives, two and enough. Gerunds as subjects, adverbs of manner. Gerunds after verbs, infinitive after verbs. So write a story about this picture using the grammars from unit two, three, and four. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu Allah, la anta astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.